On the 1st of August 2021, two young men stepped out onto the street here shortly after curfew, after a long day of good business and a short stay at a pub right behind me. Like, they were kind of tired a little bit. As they were walking home with their friends, they saw a figure emerge out of the darkness. It was a police officer brandishing a baton, and he charged at them. They ran for their lives. Only for the bodies of the duo to be found at the Embu General Hospital morgue. The friends who were with them that evening never saw them alive again, and the world came to know them as the Kianjokoma brothers. That boy died a very painful death. And that is the last door that they went through. The two were allegedly arrested by police officers. Allegedly arrested past curfew hours were found dead. Were last seen alive on Sunday. Ben and Emmanuel's handsome faces became emblematic of a serious problem of violence within the police force. There will be a daily curfew from 7 p.m. to 5 a.m. in the morning. As I'm told about a horrifying piece of evidence from the night Ben and Emmanuel died that leads back to the doorstep of the police. That the police vehicle had been set on fire by protesters was the very same one that had ferried Ben and Emmanuel was strange enough. But until this point, no one had come out to speak about what happened while Ben and Emmanuel were being arrested. By the end of the week of their deaths, the public had demanded that the officers in charge of the Manyata police station be removed and that investigations be conducted by officers based in Nairobi. This picture was taken that night in the pool hall as the boys were about to head out. After an easy night of pool with friends, they all left together. That is when everything changed. Six police officers, Benson Budhia, Consolata Karioki, Nicholas Cheriot, Martin Wanyama, Lilian Cherono, and James Mwaneki were on patrol that evening and stopped meters away from the bar in the darkness. So I lingi up and up a jewel to look on our way home to look at Shatoka to after to meter and Kaki dog. While you want to talk to your size, the woman I rode. So I'm to add that. So to the Rudy Numa, yeah, to cut this pass. They were taken by the police. And they were not even put at the back of the vehicle, they were put in the front of the vehicle. And the police moved with them. Ben had no scratch, he had nothing. Emmanuel already had been hit on the end. According to the officer's account, the boys were arrested alongside others who were flouting the curfew restrictions. The police would then drive away from the Manyata police station in the direction of Bufori, where Ben and Emmanuel allegedly jumped out of the back of the vehicle. But according to the eyewitnesses who spoke to John, Ben and Emmanuel were placed in the front of the vehicle. The boys weren't the only ones who were arrested in that raid. But strangely, everyone else, except for Ben and Emmanuel, was dropped off at the Manyata police station. This story has largely been about Ben and Emmanuel's family, but there are six other people involved, the police accused of being involved in their killing. The case of Ben and Emmanuel's alleged murder is before court. The police's main defense is that the case has been sensationalized and that the boys did attempt to escape after arrest. 